what is up welcome back to another video or live stream here on free will photos uh today we are going to be making a composite type of image using on one photo raw as our base and then getting started into photoshop um i am wearing my on one shirt because my intent was to use the plugins that i'm going to use inside of on one as a host but since I have upgraded my computer to iOS Sonoma, I've been having some challenges with getting the plugins to work. So I have to use Photoshop as my base, but this is actually a great opportunity for us to just kind of look at how you can do this if you are using Photoshop or even Affinity Photo. I'm just personally using Photoshop because of the camera raw features that I can use at the end. Um, just a personal preference there, but all of what I'm doing, uh, for the most part, minus the smart objects can be done inside of affinity photo. So you should be able to, uh, follow along in that regard. If that's what you're using. The last note that I'll make is a happy Thanksgiving to those of you who are celebrating that today. Um, and if not, then happy Thursday, we're going to get in and have a good time making some sort of image of a mini figure. So let's go ahead and jump into uh, the computer. Here we are inside of on one photo raw 2024. And you know, this is the uh, a photo I took a while ago. In fact, how long ago did I take this? Uh, okay, a few months ago, it feels like a lot longer than that. But I took it back in May of this year, with the sole intent of turning this into some sort of scene. Now, I've already done this one time using uh, On One Photo Raw as well as uh, some other assets, if you will. But I wanted to look at a different photo from a completely different shoot, by the way. That's enough talking. Let's get to editing. I'm going to go ahead and start with Brilliance AI. I will note I did change my Brilliance AI settings um, just a little bit. And I'm finding that 70% is kind of where I think photos work, especially when I'm editing on a raw image. When I'm editing on a different image, I think other, uh, I think I'll pull that up a little bit or pull it down. It just depends. But with raw files, the way that I have my camera set up to capture said files, 70% of the amount slider seems to work the most appropriate. Um, so we'll turn this off, turn it back on. You can see what it's doing to the photo. And I'm really, really enjoying this. My vision here is he's going to be coming out of a cave and it's going to be uh, full of smoke and maybe even like a flash of light back here. Um, and then I, the light that's on him, I'm going to make that a little bit more, uh, colorful as if he is walking into something that you know is just off camera right here that we don't really know what it is uh we'll we'll see how that comes together but you know like he's about to engage with another enemy um we'll see you know it, this i want to make this look like a battleground like he just left one battle and he's getting ready to go into another battle that's my vision. We'll see if I can make it happen. It all starts with Brilliance AI. And let me see if by pulling down on the... So I could make this a little bit darker. And I actually think that that works out pretty well uh, for this particular... For, for the vision that I just shared. Um, now, I think what we can do is potentially come over here to effects and work on that initial color and that's what we would send into photoshop well one of my favorite filters to work on color is the photo filter uh, and this just instantly gives that vibe like that you know i was kind of envisioning and i'm kind of making this up as i go this is how i edit photos most of the time or not most of the time a lot of the time um but when I'm compositing, I have an idea in my head and then I just have to figure out how to turn it into something 
of sustenance, if you will, over here in the actual editing bay uh, once I get going. So first thing that I want to do, I think I want this to be more of a purple light on the front. So I'm just going to open up the color wheel here, move this over to the side and probably do something along these lines, maybe. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, maybe something right around here. Let's pull this down, make it a little bit darker. And now I need to increase the amount just to see what's happening. Okay. I kind of like that. Not going to lie. Okay. So now it's time to kind of blend this into the photo and make it make sense to everything else because I want this to really be intensified on him. Now, uh, one of the ways that I'm going to do this is I'm going to come over to my sliders and this works if you're on a Mac, if you're on a PC, the color scheme here looks a little bit different. But what I want is my RGB sliders because this gives me the hex code for the color that I just selected here which is very, very important to me. I'm going to go ahead and hit Command C to copy that particular color. And then I'm going to come to local adjustment. I'm going to hit add, reset that real quick, scroll all the way down to the bottom and check on paint with color. All right. I really enjoy doing this because this gives me essentially a paintbrush. Now I could do this in Photoshop, but again, I wanted to show you that you could do this stuff inside of on one. So I want to do as much of the base edit of the composite inside of on one and then go into Photoshop. So that way I can uh, eventually take this into Boris effects and do some uh, cool stuff there and maybe even color effects out of the Nick collection. So we'll see how things go. Um, but if you have questions along the way, then drop them into the comment section. I do have my comments up over here, so I'll be able to look at those. Uh, but what am I doing now? Well, now I want to, or why did I select paint with color? And I know I selected paint with color, but for some reason, there we go. Now it has selected paint with color and I know it's all the way at the bottom. Let me see if I can get some more real estate here. So just close that top, uh, top section. Now I have my paint with color. I'm going to select this little color swatch. And you can see that's a completely different hex code. I don't want that one. I want the one that I just copied. That's that one. I'm going to hit return or enter. That gives me that purple that I just used. Now, for me personally, I think it needs to be a little bit brighter because he's walking into like I want that reflective look on his visor um, or, you know, up here where the highlights are. Right. Uh, so what you can do instead of using the RGB sliders, uh, you can use the HSB, which stands for hue, saturation and brightness. And guess what? I just want it to be a little bit brighter of the same uh, hue and saturation of the color. So I'm just going to pull up on the brightness here and you can see what's happening in this little square, how it's getting brighter. And I think something like that may work. We'll, we'll play around with it and see what happens. Now, I could make this a solid paint, but in order for this to really work the way that I'm expecting it to, I actually want to go to classic. And when you select classic inside of the local adjustments and the paint with color tool, you get access to the tone and color adjustments up here, which are really important. I'm just going to minimize some of these so that way uh, it's a little bit cleaner of a uh, of visibility on the right side here but you can see when I'm on solid paint that these are all grayed out but as soon as I go to classic I get all of these tools back and I really enjoy having those tools it does work a little bit different um, but it's okay so now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and make my brush size just a little bit larger and I'm gonna paint this over and this does not look very good right now. We're going to see what we can do to make this work. And remember, when when I work, I do a lot of trial and error. I like to do these things live because you're not watching an edited version of me editing the photo. Uh, instead, you're watching me make all of the mistakes that I would make normally. And this is how I learn. 
And I want that to be hopefully inspirational to anyone who is a little intimidated by the things that are capable inside of on one that you can figure out how to, you know, kind of do things, um, even though it may seem a little weird. And I'm also sharing my thought process. So all I'm doing here is painting in the highlighted areas because I feel like that is where this purple would really shine. And I'm not doing the greatest job. Missed a little bit of this highlight. And I guess I should probably get this highlight down here. Um, you know what? I'll just paint that whole front section of the uh, minifigure here, which is the Mandalorian. And maybe even catch this little yellow on his shoulder here. I think those are all of the areas where I would want this to uh, kind of shine through. Now I have to figure out how I'm going to blend this overall uh, because I have it in here. You know, there's different ways of blending. I could start with opacity and just kind of pull that down. And then, of course, you know, got to come over here now and I could feather this a little bit. So if I wanted to really just kind of fade that off into the abyss from my brush strokes, if I hit the letter O, you can see what happened here. If you get something like this, that means you really were masking pretty good. Uh, that Every time I look at my mask, I'm like, man, that looks like a little toddler just doodled all over the, the thing. But in context to the overall photo, it does make sense. But pulling up on the feather here definitely helps out. Um, and all I'm trying to do is blend this in as much as I can. But remember, the reason I chose paint with color was because now I can manipulate the exposure, contrast, highlights, midtones, all of those things. And that's where I think this really helps out. So uh, it should be maybe just a little bit darker on him. Uh, but we should probably open up the shadows because it's a light. And when I open up the shadows, look at what that, that color actually does to him. And this is why... I wanted to use this particular tool, all right? We'll mess around with the highlights here, see if we can make it a little bit brighter because I kind of want this, you know, not like a glow, but definitely a highlight of that, that purple uh, color. So maybe pull up on the opacity because I feel like I'm losing some of that. Um, and we'll paint this in. And I am painting at 100% opacity. Paint this in up at the top as well. And looks like I may need to hold down the option key and paint away from the corners here. Now, I could use the perfect brush uh, by hitting Command R, but I'm not going to get that detailed into it. Um, and we'll even do something like this. All right. So we painted the full front side of him because this is. Uh, where I feel like that glow would have been coming from. And we're just helping tell the story a little bit more of what the Mandalorian is about to experience, or at least what I'm imagining him about to experience. Well, there's one other way that we could try to blend this in as well. And that is by using the blending modes over here in the properties and instead of it being on, or we got to select the apply to, and where it says color range, hit the drop down, we might be able to try the highlights, and that looks kind of decent. Maybe the midtones. Uh, midtones doesn't look too bad. Um, and this is only applying that paint job that we just did to the midtones of the character and or the, the minifigure here. Um, I wonder if we pull or put it on midtones and pull up on the range and you can see how if I pull down on the range, how that starts to fade that look away. And as I pull up, how it starts to bring it over more of the minifigure. And this is actually starting to give me that look that I was envisioning. The problem is I think it needs to be a little bit darker now. So maybe what I need to do is pull down on the exposure 
because if I pull down on the brightness, it's going to change the color, but it's not going to change change it enough, right? Because that is just going to uh, essentially make it non-visible. So what I need to do, sorry, I had to clear my throat. So what I need to do is pull down on the exposure overall that this is impacting. So I'm just going to pull down on the exposure and you can see how that's starting to darken up the area. That's what I really wanted to go with there. Uh, we could play around with contrast. I don't think that's going to make much of a difference uh, for this particular um, look. And yeah. So for the sake of not making this tutorial crazy long, because uh, I sit on composites for hours at a time, and I don't think that that would be too much fun to watch. I'm going to say that I'm good with what I got here. Uh, I do like this, so I'm going to roll with it. Maybe even pull up on the opacity a little bit. That gives us a little bit more of that richness back into the overall scene. So go ahead and close that up. And we'll just call this purple set. Yeah. It's always a good thing to name your adjustments as you make them, uh, even though I didn't actually name this one. So we'll just call this purple look, whatever. doesn't really matter uh, on that particular one. But now that we have this glow here, maybe we can figure out how we want this to blend, uh, you know, the separation between the Mando that's getting this highlight and the background here, all right? And I know we haven't gotten to the composite information yet, uh, but I promise you we are going in that direction. I just want to get the base image set. So you just bear with me as I kind of work through this. And what I'm looking at right now is how purple do I want this background to be, all right? And, you you know, with the photo filter, without going into great detail, uh, you do have some options here of how this blends with the background. And I actually kind of like strong. Uh, subtle just doesn't seem to give me that color look that I want. Um, clean highlights doesn't give me that look. It makes everything purple, not a thing that I want. Uh, clean shadows helps me with that darker tone. But I do like how strong is impacting the overall image. So maybe I will go with strong. And I'll pull up on the amount just to see what's happening there. Uh, because it keeps the image dark, which is what I want. And that's what's going to help with that smoke in the background as I start to think this through. Uh, that's what's going to help with the smoke in the background. Um, and who knows? Maybe we'll put a little... Uh, fireball or a laser beam coming off of here like he's about to go uh, give that work to whoever is about to come here and maybe we'll get his boosters going I don't know see I'm just I, this is how I do right uh, I start working on stuff and then it's like okay this is kind of what I want um, and then I start making things happen and there you go all right so now I think I have the base of what I want to send into Photoshop. What I'm going to do is go ahead and hit the check mark. That's going to take me back to my browse. Now, normally I would just start sending this stuff to Boris FX or wherever I want to go uh, straight from on one, but it's just not, that, that's not a possibility today. So I'm going to right click here and I want to create a virtual copy. What this allows me to do is come back, hopefully, once we get the edit uh, capability, um, the, what's not edit capability, the word that I'm thinking of, and it escapes me at the moment, when I can get the plugins to work with on one again. Uh, but we're going to create a version. I said virtual copy. I've been working in Lightroom lately, and it's called a virtual copy there. It's called a version inside of on one same thing just gonna call it uh, different things all right right click again and this time i'm going to hit send to photoshop and we'll get a dialog box once i get to that okay 
So I'm going to send to Adobe Photoshop 2024. You could send this to other editing software if that's something you so choose. But for me, I'm going to Photoshop again, purely because I can't launch my plugins through on one right now. Uh, and that seems to have been a problem since I updated to uh, iOS or app OS, Mac OS Sonoma. Um, get a sip of coffee here, but please leave your comments or questions. So, and you know, this is the process. If you are looking to work with other applications that on one doesn't natively support or host in a, uh, host as a plugin. This is the, the method of doing it. You right click on it, send to that application. It's going to create a file that it's going to send. And that's what's happening here. Uh, it created a TIFF file, which is what I like to work with uh, primarily when I'm inside of Photoshop because it does allow me to save layers. Uh, TIFF files are a little bit more flexible. So the first thing that I do in Photoshop and I recommend everyone does whenever you get into Photoshop, especially if you're going to work on a composite, is you right click and you duplicate your back layer. And it doesn't matter what you call it uh, as long as you have a copy, because if you need to revert back to the original, you want to make sure that you have that background layer saved. Now, if you don't care about that, then skip over that. Okay. So now I have my purple looking, uh, pretty decently developed image and I am good with what I got going on here. So what is the first thing that I want to do? I personally like to work on backgrounds first, because if I get the background the way that I want it to, to look, the foreground or the main subject will start to uh, come through the way that I want it to. So here's how I am going to do this. All right, I'm going to create a second copy, or I guess a third copy. I don't know. There's going to be multiple copies. This one I'm going to label edit BG. All right, and this is the one that I'm actually going to do all of my edits on. And then this one I'm going to label reference BG. You'll see why that kind of helps me uh, in the long run, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and turn off that edit BG and with the reference BG, I really need to get rid of the main subject here. Now there's tons of ways to get rid of your main subject. Uh, but for me, I'm just going to do select subject and it's going to select him. I'm going to use generative fill and hit generate in theory. This should just get rid of them. This is one of the benefits of working inside of Photoshop, I think. Um, you know, you can really make fast work of things like this, except for it didn't. It just gave me another mini figure. Uh, so, you know, again, one of the reasons why I enjoy editing this. Uh, so what we're going to do, instead of using the generative fill, I'm just going to delete this layer. We are going to select the subject again. And instead of using the um, generative fill options, we are going to use, and I don't think it's actually on the toolbar here. So I'm just going to hit delete and that should use, oh no, that cuts the hole in it. Wow. We are going to click on edit and I want content aware fill. That's what I was trying to get to. Um, and I just want this area to be filled relatively well. Um, it, you could see over here on the right side, the display or the preview that it's given me. Um, and I think I could work with that. I'm not going to like make this it doesn't need to be perfect as much as I, because I'm going to still recut the, uh, the main subject in there. So I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to roll with it. Hit OK. And now I have this area filled uh, and I can start working the background. 
Um, you know, let's go ahead and deselect that. And maybe what we'll do just to help make this look a little bit better, uh, I will add these two to a group. And let's see if I can blur this group and then just mask that blur in. So we'll use a, should be able to get a blur down here. Uh, of course. So I'm thinking of, <laughs> I'm thinking of working inside of Affinity Photo where you can get that. So that's not going to work. So that's okay though. Uh, what I'll do is I will do a command, command option E that gives me a background here. I'm going to hit filter and we'll go to blur and then we'll go to Gaussian blur. But before I do that, eh, yeah, we'll go with Gaussian blur. I need to convert this to a smart object because I'm going to need a mask. So now when I go filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and I want to sample like this area right here. I just want that to disappear. However, I can make that disappear. I don't really care how. Bam, like so. Okay. So now I can click on this mask and Honestly, I, I might be okay with that, but that's not going to fit with the focal plane that we have with our main character. So what I'm going to do is hit command I to invert this mask. Click on that, hit the letter B to grab my brush. And I am simply going to uh, hit the letter X. So that way I'm painting with white and I'm just going to feel like my opacity need to turn that up and I should be able to blur this whole section out which will make more sense and I think that that looks perfectly fine um, I would love to clean up that little area there I don't know if this works on smart objects so let me try it anyway uh, where he is not the clone step. We'll go with the healing brush. No. I want to go with, let's go with spot healing. We'll make the brush a little bit larger. Yeah, smart objects don't allow you to do that, so not going to worry about it. Yeah, too much work for one thing. So now we're just going to label this blur BG. I'm going to turn off all of these other layers. In fact, I'll just minimize that and turn off the layer. And we can put this at the bottom because we don't need it. All right. So now with the blur background layer, we're going to start adding in our smoke. The way that we do that, we're going to go ahead and convert this into a smart object, which uh, because I tried to do that whole... Um, What's the word? Or actually, you know what? Let's rasterize you. We'll use the healing brush. And we'll just paint over this to fix that area. Should render out pretty decent. There, look. So if you need to get more precise and more perfected. Wow, that's bad English. Anyway, if you need to uh, get that fixed, just convert it to a raster layer. Make your uh, healing brush edit and then convert it back to a smart object. See, these are the reasons why we do these lives. So you can see all of that in action. Now we're going to start with porous effects optics because this is where I'm going to generate my smoke. Again, I'm working on a, uh, a, what's the word, a smart object. So I'll be able to come back and modify this later. Okay, had to clear my throat again. All right, 
Um, where do I want to start? I think the smoke is actually under render. And we should... Maybe it's not under render. Is it a particle illusion? Let's see. There's dust and fog. And if I got to use dust and fog, I can. I think that'll all work the same. But I'm pretty sure there is smoke somewhere in here. There it is. PI smoke. Boom. So we'll go ahead and click that. And I like what it's doing already. Just the default smoke. It's pink fog. Again, we had pink. I did not intentionally plan for that to work that way. It just happens to work out that way. But um, let's see if there's a different, uh, maybe smoke fill. And that is not quite large enough. I'm thinking of more like uh, whimsy smoke, if you will, something like this but spread out. So maybe something like that. Um, you know, just looking through here to see if I can find anything. This might work, but it's all too small. Uh, so what we're going to do is come over to world transform and I think it's the master scale that will make it larger for us. And I'm not worried about it going over those rocks because I could just paint that out on the mask because this is going, the, the whole reason why I use smart objects is because I get a mask specifically to the effect that I'm adding. And that's one of the benefits of working in Photoshop uh, as opposed to other editors um, because you get those smart objects. Now, 500 is the largest it seems I can go with this. So I may have to make a few instances of the smoke. Um, but let's see if I can actually modify the particles that it's making. So let's go to particle properties. And I wonder what is the velocity going to do here? Okay, so that just changes kind of where the smoke ends up. And I think that that might be okay. Let's see what the number does. Okay, that changes the density. And this is all random, and, or at least it feels like it's random. The higher the number, the more dense maybe it gets. So let's go lower numbers. Yeah, lower numbers. I like that. I like the lower numbers. So what does life do? Life is uh, how it would have manipulated going through time um so i think we'll go with that and then let's mess around with motion random this doesn't seem to be doing much of anything for photos uh and if you're not familiar with boris effects uh optics is a essentially boris effects they make things for video movie industry standard uh special effects well, they made their own photography app. Again, I'm not affiliated, but if you want to go pick this up, they are having a sale. There's a link down in the description box so you can go and see what that sale is. But essentially, they took their video effects and turned it into a photo editor, but give you effects for your photos. And you can make some pretty cool things inside of here. Uh, and you can also do some very modest edits. Today, I'm not going to do something modest. I'm going to do something that is a little bit more uh, grand, or at least in my mind, it's grand. We'll see how it all plays out in the end. Um, so with that being said, I think that looks about where I was going with it. We'll uh, have to play around with it later on down the line, but I'm going to work with that. So... With this, as it is, I'm good. I'm just going to go ahead and hit apply. And we are going to allow that smoke to go into our smart object. Just like so. Okay. So, uh, 
I don't think I can rename the smart filters. That would be awesome if I could. Yeah, it just tells me that it's optics. Because what I want to do now is uh, render another version of optics. So let's see if we can do that. Let's go Boris FX optics. And yeah, okay. So the challenge here, uh, we'll go with no. And now the smoke is baked into this particular uh, edit. Um, and I guess if I'm going to do it this way, I might as well just hit cancel and come back into optics over here and just build my composite effect for the background inside of optics. Why is it doing that? No, I need you to open optics. There we go. I double click the settings to optics instead of actually opening optics. Now where's my smoke? I can't win for losing today. should be able to go back into optics with the smoke. Let me hit yes and see. Okay. I guess I have to hit yes for that. Let me get some coffee. It's too early for all these uh, problems I keep running into. But, you know, that is the, uh, that's the way it goes. All right. So now what else do I want to do to this background? Well, I mentioned earlier, I kind of wanted to make a glow that happens back here. And because I don't know where everything is inside of optics, what I'm going to do is actually click on the magnifying glass here. I'm just going to type glow. And these are not exactly what I want. So I think it's under light. In fact, let me close this out. Close out the search. Come on. I need to get to the filters again. And, of course, I should be able to just close this out. But there we go. I got to click the magnifying glass. Okay. And we'll go to light. And I'm looking for something i guess maybe a lens flare would be appropriate uh yeah i think maybe we'll have to go with a lens flare because that seems to be the only thing that's allowing me to add in the that light and sorry if you hear my family in the background you know it's a holiday they're home and they're doing stuff we're gonna go ahead and hit plus here to add a new layer i'm gonna add this lens flare layer on top of here and we're going to make a fairly large uh lens flare okay i kind of like what this is doing to the overall scene remember we're just trying to build atmosphere in the scene all right so i'll go ahead and reposition this um and just thinking kind of like hey where is our main subject going to be so and i'll make that larger and I feel like maybe somewhere right around here wouldn't be too bad. And now it's time to kind of modify this particular layer. Um, I feel like the center here is a little too bright. Um, so let's go into... There's so many options and this can be overwhelming. Let's pull this hot spot down and see if that helps us. Oh, that's just moving the position of it. I don't want to move the position. I want to, uh, I guess the thing that says brightness is probably the one that I need to modify. So we'll just move that back. And hopefully that's where uh, I think I was just going to move this manually anyway. So we'll do something like this and then we'll come to brightness 
and let's try 60. Let's see. Oh, no. I meant to do 0. 0.6. 0. 0.6. <laughs> yeah, there we go. There we go. All right. See, trial and error. This is this is why I do these things live, because this is just this is what happens when you're using software. And um, I know a lot of people who they they will get frustrated as soon as they run into a brick wall. You just kind of got to mess around with stuff and figure it out. And this is how you get better, or at least this is how I get better. Better. Uh, and I just want to share that with you guys. All right. Now, the good news is you can click and drag to actually manipulate these sliders as well. And I'm just going to pull down on the atmosphere here. I think that that helps out overall. And I like what it's doing. I'm not going to lie. So I'm going to go ahead and hit apply. And we'll let that come into on one or I'm sorry, into Photoshop. And then... What I'm going to do is probably use the blend if option and see how that will. Let me just close that. There we go. Let's do the blend if. So if I double click on the side over here, um, I want to see if I can kind of get this to blend with that background and kind of mesh it all together. Right. So. If I pull up on the shadows, which that doesn't work. So we want to go with the underlying layer. Nope, that doesn't work either. Maybe it's the highlights. Okay. Uh, oh, I see what's happening. It is. It's all right. We're going to make it work. We'll leave the blend if alone for now, and then I'll come back and make that modification. Okay, so now it's time to put our character back into the overall shot. Uh, the way that we're going to do that, I'm going to move this up to the top here, and we're just going to do select subject because that's what we use to get rid of him out of the last one, and we will go ahead and invert this, which is what this option here does. And then I'm just gonna hit the delete key. And so now that brings him back into our uh, photo. The problem is, as you can see, he doesn't match with everything else. So now we gotta kinda blend him in and make him make sense to the overall photo. Uh, the way that I like to do this is simply duplicating the layer. Uh, duplicate layer, boom. And we'll just call it blur copy background or blur BG copy. That's okay. Let Photoshop think here a little bit. It's got a lot of uh, wiggle room to do. And what I'm going to do is actually rasterize this layer because I don't need this to be a smart object anymore uh, because that will just confuse me anyhow. So what I'm going to do is right click rasterize the layer. And what that does is it combines everything into one layer, makes it super easy on the uh, processing power. So now when I bring this over the top, you can see what it does to the overall image. And I'm okay with that. Now, what I think I can do is kind of pull down on the opacity. And this should start to allow our character to shine through. And I can see where I need to develop a little bit more with this particular image. And maybe one of these blend modes will help. Mm, I don't like color dodge. Overlay doesn't do a bad job. Kind of like soft light. Hard light really does 
work for what I was going for. This is fitting into that vision. Now it's just, how do I keep that vision? And I'm not worried about what's happening down here because I'm just going to put a bunch of smoke over this bottom portion. And that's going to, you know, make, make it look like he's walking through uh, this smoke. Um, in fact, what we can do is we'll grab our lasso tool and I'll do something like that. We'll do generative fill and we'll just uh, smoke and see what happens because why not just add it in now and maybe I needed to go up a little bit higher, but that's okay. I think that it's starting to come together. He is definitely looking more cut out, so I'm going to have to go and... Maybe I needed to go up a little bit higher with that selection, but that's all right because what I'll do is I will take this, right click, rasterize that, boom. We're going to take that as our smoke for the bottom, command and T, and we'll just go ahead and scale. Oh, it got his leg in there. Of course it did. All right, no worries. Here's what we'll do. We'll come over. I lose my, let's just do some command Z's here. Let's get that back. All right. Let's come here. Get the brush tool. And let's see if I can get his leg out of this mask. So we'll go with X and yeah, something like that. Cause I don't want, I don't want to scale up his leg. So now I should be able to rasterize this and go command T. And then when I scale this up, yeah, there we go. That works a little bit better. Got to figure out this piece here, but whatever. Uh, we'll go ahead and hit return. We'll come over to this mask and let's see. Yeah, we'll just paint that away. Look at that. This is how you work through challenges in compositing. You just make stuff up as you go. <laughs> and that is exactly what I did there. Okay. Okay. Um, I think that will work out pretty decently. We'll see in the end uh, how everything goes. All right, so now I need to come back to my character cutout. I'm going to call this subject cutout. And I will find a way. What we really need to do is... Um, I need to blur the edges of the individual. How can I blur the edges of the individual? Let's go ahead and duplicate this real quick. Duplicate layer. Yep. And let's go ahead and apply a blur. Uh, Gaussian blur. Too much, something like that maybe, hit okay, put that underneath, and that helps him blend in just a little bit more. Uh, maybe we'll go Command-T and just scale that blur up just a touch. That just helps with those edges. Just, a, just a, a little bit, right? Not perfect. Um, I would have to spend a whole lot more time really getting the light to match exactly 
um, with what is going on here. But for the sake of what we're going to be doing here, I wonder if I can bring this up a little bit. Yeah, maybe like that. Okay, cool. So now what I'm going to do, uh, because again, I don't want to spend a whole lot of time. We've been going for about 51 minutes now. I'm going to go ahead and click the top layer here, command shift, uh, command option, shift and E. This is going to create that stamped layer. And then I'm going to send this into Boris effects. This is going to be uh, blaster and booster. Okay. So we'll do something like that. Maybe. Hmm. Uh, I will make this a smart object just because it makes sense to have a smart object. We'll go to filter, Boris effects, optics. And this is one of those things that I think Boris effects does do uh, pretty well is under render. I think it is, or no, should be particle illusion. And then I think it is, we want fire. So we'll go with that. And then maybe something like that. Yeah, that sounds, seems about right. Because I want to go with his, his, uh, his booster. Now, the challenge with the on-screen controls is they are not always as, they're not proportionate to your overall image. Um, so I just need to fine, fine tune this real quick. I think we'll go something like that. And that'll probably be fine. Um, and let me zoom this back in. And we'll, yeah. Can I move this? Nope, because I don't have that control. So we'll go to world transform. And let's see. Yeah. So little movements. I'm just trying to line this up pretty decently with the bottom of his, uh, of his rocket here. I think that will come out quite decent. Um, let's go ahead and mess with the particle properties and let's see what the lifetime does to this particular fire. Yeah, I actually like what it did there. And then see if it does anything to the spin. Not seeing anything really change there. Okay, random speed. I actually like that more because it fits better with uh, what I need this to fit into. So I'm going to go with that. So now let's hit the plus icon here and... We'll move this one underneath because what I think I want to do is put a larger like explosion back here to really, you know, make it seem like he's coming through an explosion. Now, this is, again, me just purely making stuff up, right? Um, I said that I was going to do that. We were at 15 because that's what worked previously. So we'll do something like that. Okay. And then let's go ahead and go to world transform. Let's scale this up. And we'll probably rotate it because that just seems to make more sense. And let's scale it up a little bit more. Okay, and we'll do something like that. And now, uh, one of the things that I don't do as often here is talk about the masking capabilities inside of optics. And there's actually some pretty cool masking capabilities 
I'm not the I'm not like some expert at this. I'm no expert at any of this, by the way. But you know what? We're gonna go ahead and click on mask, and I'm gonna use the easy mask. And what I want to do is put this everywhere except for on the individual. So hopefully, or the subject. So this first one is going to say, where do you want it in the foreground? Well, I don't want it in the foreground. I actually want to paint it into the background. So I'm going to go around the individual like so. And then we're going to paint the foreground like that because I want the explosion behind him. And now I'll hit this gear icon and that should hopefully put the explosion behind him. It may actually put the explosion over him, in which case I'll hit the invert button and that should solve that problem. But hopefully I did it the right way because there's definitely green on the subject and not on the background, which I think I wanted green on the background and red on the subject. But yeah, that did exactly what I thought it was going to do. Uh, so this should be the invert button. Let's do that. Let's invert that. And there, there we go. We have solved that mystery. So I'm going to click off of that um, mask. And now I should be able to move this around. to a place where I want it. Maybe about there. I don't know. My computer's moving slow. Just I'm asking it to do a whole lot. So I'm not going to get too picky with it. The, the goal of this live stream was really just to show you capabilities uh, rather than perfection. So let's go ahead and pull up on this if I can get the scale to go up because I want this to be like a grand explosion right um, in fact we'll rotate this just a bit my computer normally does not lag this far behind but that just goes to show how um, oh, maybe we need to go the other direction because that's not working. Uh, come on. All right. For the sake of me not losing my sanity on how this is skipping through, we'll just go with that. But, you know, being able to paint him out a little bit and get the effect behind him again not the greatest mask not a perfect uh i'm not an expert at using these masks but hopefully now i can put that there and the last thing that we'll do we'll click on this top one and we'll add a new layer and we'll put a, a laser beam my computer is really struggling right now. So by adding this laser beam, should be able to apply it uh, to this image. And I think this one will probably be good. That looks very laser beamish. I want it to look a little bit better. So maybe this one. I think this one looks a little bit better. It's like a laser sword red. Yeah. And this is probably more appropriate to the genre. So let's just go ahead and click and drag that over. There we go. And then we'll pull this aspect of it out. And I want to make it the same distance or um, 
not distance. That's the wrong word. I want to make it the same angle as his blaster is actually pointing. So what I need to do is pull up. Come on. My goodness. Yeah, I want the blaster to point up. Now, this scale of the blaster does not match the output that it is giving. So what we're going to do <laughs> is actually change that so that way we get the right output. And this is going to be, it's not in the atmosphere. Maybe the width. Let's increase the width. But maybe if I click in here and we'll make this 80, see what 80 does. That way I know at least what I'm adding into the image and we can make the change later. Uh, 80 doesn't seem to be the right number either. So let's make that 120. Hit enter. And watch, 120 is going to like be over the top. Uh, no, I, I think 120 might actually work. Um, let me go 150. And I know that this hasn't rendered completely yet. So hopefully it will render eventually. But I feel like my computer is asking me to give it a break. wonder if I can pull this down. Oh. Oh, wait. Do I have this backwards? I think I have it backwards. <laughs> oh, man. That's great. Oh, well, okay. So... I can't get this to keep up with me. It's doing its own thing. Yeah. So I do have it backwards. I have the stop aspect of it. And all right. And then Let's see, position. I just want to move this over. So hopefully I can keep up just to move it over a little bit. I feel like my computer has gotten slower since I updated to Mac OS Sonoma. Because my computer was never this slow whenever I did this type of stuff. I don't know if it's because I'm live streaming or what it is. Um, plus I've also had a hard drive that continuously doesn't connect. So I wonder what your guys' experiences are if you've upgraded to or updated to macOS Sonoma, but I'm just going to go ahead and hit apply because this is just getting a little bit more frustrating than I would like it to be, uh, because this isn't the experience that I've had in the past. Um, now Maybe it's because I'm streaming. I don't know. Uh, but I'm not getting the final composite that I was hoping to get. And this is just not coming together the way that I had hoped for it to. Uh, but the goal here wasn't really to get to a amazing end result as opposed to just sharing ways that you can composite inside of Photoshop uh, I'm not the greatest composite artist, 
if that is the thing um i'm working at it and you know bringing you guys along for the journey so hopefully you found some value even though my computer was giving me such a hard time but hopefully you found some value in today's content if you want to follow me you can check me out on vero you can also come over to freewillphotos.com and you can join the community there i do check the post of uh, of the people that are joining there um and you know i answer and have discussions there but i also answer all of the comments and you can also send me an email or you can go over to the contact there's a lot the contact form on my website there are a lot of ways that you can get a hold of me if you got questions or if you just want to make a comment or if you just want to talk photography uh you can send me a message over on vero so until next time i want you guys to stay inspired and keep creating peace Thank you.